Hi everyone, this is Seeking Sustainability in Japan. I'm your host, JJ Walsh, and this is a podcast version of a written interview I did with podcast host Listen Notes. So this is called Seeking Sustainable Inspiration from Japan through interviews with good people doing great things from across Nihon. So the first question, tell us about you and your podcast. So thanks for having me on your show. I'm originally from Hawaii. I grew up there, but I've lived and worked in Japan for over 27 years. I'm engaged with travel, tourism, and small business communities in the Hiroshima area of Japan for many years, which led me on to consulting, uh, working with uh, people on strategy and branding work to try to introduce their uh, more sustainable points as a part of the value of their brand. Uh, but being confined to home during coronavirus moved me online to connect with others and to seek out inspiring stories and insights from people across the land of the rising sun and to share it with an international audience. My aim in doing the podcast is to inspire, spark new ideas, and motivate listeners to apply some of these ideas and insights to their own work, travel, and lifestyles. I know that these interviews have personally inspired and sparked new ideas in me, so it was a way to share this with other people who might be going through similar things as I was, especially during coronavirus time. Most of my listeners are in Japan, uh, closely followed by North America and India. Some listeners join us from other areas of Asia, as well as Europe and Oceania. Next question, why and how did you start this podcast? So I'm an avid listener of podcasts, as most of us are who create our own podcasts. And when I take sanity walks to reconnect with nature and to stay healthy, the ideas and insights of these podcasts that I listen to really help me focus on future possibilities in my own life. And that inspired me to try to share some of my ideas and interviews with people that might do the same for my listeners. Initially, I was just trying to stay busy with research, networking, and helping people um, in businesses and projects who I knew were struggling during the coronavirus time. I wanted to encourage them to keep going by helping them promote their brand. But it has grown into so much more of a meaningful way to share information than just staying busy. The podcast started in June of 2020, a few months after I started the live stream video interview uh, show series um, as a way to increase my audience and to create more value from the insights of the interviews. So instead of just having the video component, taking the audio and creating a podcast version um, adds more value and adds a wider audience. The first episode took about a week to release after trying and failing many times. <laughs> I'm still not great at the editing, but definitely learning from my mistakes and taking in the feedback of listeners and trying to apply what they suggest in order to improve uh, listening to other podcasters and taking notes from how they do it. Try to do it better is also another great strategy. How do you find the time and funding to do this podcast. So I release an episode at least once a week, but sometimes I can upload episodes a few times a week depending on my workload. I don't have regular work coming in now, so I'm able to dedicate myself to interviews a few times a week. I aim to keep going at least once a week, even once my work picks up again. So even though uh, this podcast and video series is very self-funded, I do feel it is great training and networking and it is building a wonderful brand for the kind of business I want to do and creates a sense of trust 
by listeners and potential clients who can listen to the interviews and ideas that I share from the podcast and hopefully feel more comfortable about getting in touch and doing work for them in the future. My podcast costs about $20 a month for hosting, editing, transcriptions, marketing, and it is mostly self-funded. Although I really appreciate my supporters and I'm able to cover these costs of the hosting platforms due to their monthly subscription support. Of course, uh, the amount of time that you have to dedicate to editing and uploading and doing the marketing is not covered, uh, but the basic costs of the hosting and stuff is covered by my subscribers, so I really appreciate them. What do you gain from podcasting? So I hope to build sponsorships as I start to offer bonus tracks, edited and ad-free videos and other perks to members. At the moment, I have about $30 each month in regular sponsorship across YouTube, Patreon, and Buy Me A Coffee. I haven't gotten any podcast-specific sponsors yet, and I have just under 900 downloads of the podcast each month. So I hope once I pass the 1,000 downloads a month benchmark, I'll be able to get a few more sponsorships and maybe podcast-specific sponsorships. I think there is so much benefit, however, in career development, networking, and even self-development through podcasting, as I feel closer in some ways to my audience than through the video medium sometimes. And I feel that in connection to the podcasts that I listen to as well, uh, as I'm doing my walks or cleaning or shopping or doing other things, and I have the podcaster in my ear, It's a very personal connection you can create just by listening. I've had some great episodes and uh, wonderful responses from podcast listeners, and it has led to future topics and wonderful guests um, for my listeners um, to enjoy. And it's wonderful to have that engagement aspect where they lead me to future topics and future guests for episodes. Um, Also had so many wonderful comments about how much they appreciate the podcast series and the video series. So that keeps me going. How does your podcast process look like? Um, So I'm using Captivate as a podcast hosting platform and have been very happy with the engagement from the staff and support if I have trouble with anything. I am enhancing the video audio using iMovie on my Mac, but I need to rely on the quality of the guest mic as well, which is often hit and miss. Also the internet connection because we're doing it live. I'm starting to ask some guests to do a a clean recording on their side, so through their, their smartphone, and if possible to wear headphones so we don't have a, like a, a replay or a, an echo. Um, But this is often a big ask for many people because um, people are struggling to even do the basic connection via the computer. So I I just want to make sure I get the content and the connection with them and the interview is the most important. And then the technical aspects comes after. Um, You have to kind of judge case by case. All the interviews are done live, and I have used a variety of software and platforms from Skype to iCam to Haps to StreamYard and Restream.io, uh, which multi-stream the broadcast out to my social media channels at the same time. I get the most engagement from the live audience on Facebook and Twitter, but the best quality on YouTube and Twitch. But Uh, much smaller audiences during the lives on YouTube and Twitch. Recently, I've been approved also for live streaming onto the LinkedIn platform, although the quality is quite poor so far. um, There is good engagement there if my guests, especially, is an active user on that platform. So if I'm talking to someone who's an active user on YouTube, we have more engagement for that 
uh, platform. If they're more active on LinkedIn, the more engagement there. So it really depends on um, the support around the guests network. How do you market your show? So 40% of my listeners access via Apple Podcasts and over 75% by mobile devices. So uh, only 25% are accessing on computers, um, but 75% are mobile. So that's really interesting. And slightly more listeners are using an iPhone than an Android. I sent out posters um, before every live stream uh, made with Canva. And I use uh, that PR on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, LinkedIn with a time and date to try to get people to join us live so they can add their comments and questions and really feel more engaged with the accountability and transparency of the interview, which is uh, very closely connected to sustainability. For the podcast, I use the same channels as well as embed the podcast on my website. I share a link to the podcast via a monthly newsletter. I recently started using review and Substack um, newsletter systems, as well as do a promotion after when the podcast is ready on Buy Me a Coffee, uh, Twitter, Patreon, and all my social media. What advice would you share with aspiring new podcasters? I would say make sure you choose a quiet time in your day when you have the most clarity and try to emulate the voice styles you like to listen to the most. I have tried various approaches and the most relaxed style intros are the ones I like the best, so I'm trying to do that on my podcasts as well. Ones that it's easy to tell um, when the host is distracted or hassled. Um, so you definitely don't want to do that. You don't want to relay that negative message to your audience. You want to relay a message which is positive and useful and enjoyable to your listeners. Uh, one thing I learned the hard way is about output levels. Um, so I try to match now, try to make sure my output levels are matched and uh, doesn't change too much, loud and soft, during the episode. Um, people have told me that they get a little bit annoyed if they have to adjust the volume throughout the podcast. So that's, that's something I try to keep uh, standard if possible. Um, I really like the classic pod style of having background music at the intro and outro, so in the beginning and the end of the podcast. And I use royalty-free tunes of one of my guests, Hiko Simon, via SoundCloud. And it's a nice opportunity for me to give him a shout out in the notes, and he always comments how much he appreciates that too. I like some of the pods that use uh, certain songs as jingles, but with some of them, sometimes I find it a little bit annoying. Um, it really depends on my mood. So this is something to consider if you're gonna use the same song every time. Um, some people might like it, some people might find it annoying if it's the same tunes over and over. Uh, where can we learn more about you and your podcast? Well, thank you so and much for, for asking, asking this interview. Um, you can find me on my business website, inboundambassador.com, Linktree, JJ Walsh, for all my social media channels. And also there's links to donation and subscription links there where people can get bonus content or edited ad-free versions of videos. And podcasts are also available for the um, amazing people who sponsor me and uh, become members of my channels. So I'm really looking forward to connecting with more of you. And thank you so much for posting this interview with me. I really appreciate it. Have a great day, everyone.